We just saw that Jupiter and Saturn, even when we take out the sun, still make up pretty much most of the solar system. So what do, let's take a closer look. What do they look like? Well, I kind of just like the word planets. I think we should divide them up because really there's not much in common between Jupiter and Pluto or something like this. All right, so, so you're... I, I, my, my preferred for Jupiter and Saturn, they're in a class of their own. Okay. We would call them the gas giants. Okay, so Jupiter and Saturn are their own subclass of our solar system, the gas giants. And we've seen they're 90% of everything. Okay. Um, and if you look up close at these things, you can see they've got all these pretty, this is Jupiter, all these pretty swirly patterns. A lot, a lot of people say sometimes Jupiter almost looks like Van Gogh paintings in terms of how picturesque yeah, it is. Yeah, this is one of my favourite pictures. This is one of its moons, Io, yes. in front of Jupiter, just giving you a sense of how much bigger Jupiter is than its moons. And the moons of Jupiter are pretty damn big, Yeah, we? I mean, we'll talk the, about later. Yeah, I, we're not talking about a little speck of rock here. Yes, and Jupiter has these amazing patterns. Yeah. Um, these are clouds, okay. deep, swirling, fast-moving clouds. We actually don't know what the chemistry is that makes the pattern. It's some sort of complicated hydrocarbon, but we can't actually identify what particular compounds make some of them orange and some purple and so on. Okay. It's some sort of complicated hydrocarbon chemistry. Um, you can look at a movie of uh, Jupiter. So what we're looking at here is a time-lapse movie taken. Um, I think this was by the Voyager spacecraft as they mm -hmm. came close. And you can see the clouds all swirling Swir around. Yeah, you can see yeah. the great red spot, which is a storm that by itself is it's, bigger than the Earth. And it's swirling around. At like about a, a thousand kilometres an hour. But you can see all the different cloud banks swirling left and right. Yeah, and, yeah, and, they, and, and there's some that move in opposite directions. Yeah, Jupiter as a whole is spinning very fast every 10 hours around. And then yep. you get all these cloud bands swirling. So it's clearly everything we can see at the surface is gas. Okay. How deep does the gas go? Well, this is a, what the current, currently orbiting Jupiter is the Juno yep. probe, and its main purpose is to say, see how deep does this gas go and what's That's in right. the middle. And what it does, as you can see here, is it dives in an orbit that plunges very close over the poles, then loops way out. This is carefully designed because Jupiter has very strong radiation right. belts. When it's way out, it's not being saturated by radiation. It can plunge inside the worst of the radiation. And as it dips past the bottom, you can see uh, the... Um, how its gravity, the gravity of Jupiter pulls on it. Yep. And as Jupiter spins, as the clouds move at different levels deep into the interior, that affects the gravity and affects how fast the spacecraft moves. Uh, so you're essentially like cutting these slices, these cloud layers as it moves yep. through gravity to see, well, how deep do these cloud layers go? Yes, yeah, so basically, if the clouds are going in one direction, if they're moving in one direction because of the wind, they'll spin a bit faster, which means centrifugal force will pull them out a bit. Yep. And if they're moving the other way, it'll push them in a bit. And this will mean that you've got more mass further out and more mass yep. closer in, in different bands. And that will cause slight ripples in the movement of the Juno spacecraft which can be measured with exquisite precision. And what they've discovered just in the last few yes. years is in fact these clouds go very deep. Yes. It's not as if, like Earth, you've got a thin layer of clouds over a solid interior. There is no solid interior for Jupiter. It's just kind of clouds all the way down. Yeah, I mean, they measured it, what, at least 500 kilometers, but that was to the extent of which they just kind of could physically measure, and it probably goes even much deeper than that. So it seems that Jupiter and also Saturn, the gas giants, are made mostly of hydrogen and helium. Okay, so Saturn does operate the same as Jupiter. Yes, it's less dense. We'll sort of talk about that in a minute. But what we've got is you've got this hydrogen, helium, and trace amounts of organics, which give it the colours. Yep. And all the different cloud banks. And these clouds go fairly deep. As you penetrate deeper and deeper, it will get denser and denser gas. Most likely it becomes so dense the hydrogen turns into a liquid metal, a bit like mercury when you oh, get inside. Okay, so that's because we've had so much density and therefore so much pressure pushing on this gas, we can then change the state of it to a liquid. Yes, I mean, you think of hydrogen gas as yep. being pretty thin, but if you pile half of Jupiter on top of it, that incredible pressure You'll probably have a lot. it so much it'll turn into a very hot, possibly even a superfluid in the middle, a quantum mechanical superfluid of... So, so we do think there's some sort of liquidy ball on in the inside, but not a normal liquid the way we think of? Yeah, so it's liquid metal hydrogen probably. So if you had a really good submarine in principle, you could go swimming all the way down, and I wouldn't actually advise it. Yeah, it a combination of radiation, and heat, and pressure would kill anything possible to the human technology. But in principle, you could go right through Jupiter and out the other side with a really good submarine. All right. But, but possibly right in the middle, there's a, a, a core of rock and ice very hot ice, superheated ice, and this is actually very important for understanding how Jupiter formed, yeah, okay. and one of the major purposes of Juno is to try and work out if it's actually there or not. Okay. We think it probably is, but certainly it's way down in the middle. Most of Jupiter is hydrogen and helium and yeah. just gas and liquid. Okay. And Saturn is the same. The cloud bands on Saturn are not as spectacular as those of Jupiter, I mean, given we don't really understand the chemistry on Jupiter. Yeah. 
Saturn's cold or it has different chemistry. Um, you can just about see the bands. Mm -hmm. uh, normally dominated. Um, so here's some around the poles, and there's a nice cloud you can see up. Occasionally you get these clouds. So, so it does definitely behave like Jupiter, it's just a little bit different. Yeah, so it's different colours on the outside, but the inside's probably very similar, okay. only less dense. Basically because Jupiter's so heavy, the, the gas in the middle is compressed and denser than water. But Saturn's actually less dense than water. Saturn would float if you had a big enough bath. And that's just because it was smaller, so it had less material. So, so the weight's yeah. not compressing everything down in the middle. Okay. So those are the gas giants. And if we ignore the sun, that's 90% of the solar system by mass. All right.